Hi, this is Brian Lai from Malaysia. I'm a lecturer from The One Academy. In this video, I'm going to import every high resolution model from all the previous video to one. Here I have my low resolution blocking model in the scene. In a minute, they are all going to turn into high resolution model. Now I'm importing each model to the scene. We are going to separate and combine some components because OBJ combines everything. Now we are arranging them nicely in our outliner as well as renaming them. Now everything is done. We are going to do a quick render to see how it looks without the textures. In the render settings, go to V-Ray and make sure the render engine is set to V-Ray GPU, RTS is checked, and 3090 is selected in the device's selection. Make sure GI is turned on, and viewport subdivision is checked under overwrite. Now we can hit IPR render. Finally, we can compare the blocking and the high resolution version. Now we should start to do some fine adjustment like the coffee cup position and also duplicate and put our waffle nicely in place. Go to number 4 wireframe mode can help in monitoring if the mesh is clipped into each other. Also place the fork onto the plate. Time to deform the plant. Before that, duplicate it so that we can always find the original straight version. Now I'm using soft selection to deform them. Be careful, don't make any leaves clip into each other. You can change the leaves direction or sizes if necessary. We will have to wheel them from different angles to make sure everything looks right. The bed sheet looks too jaggy in the foldings, so I decided to press number 3 to subdivide mode. It pops up to ask if I really want to smooth this large number of faces. I'm hitting yes, don't ask again. Don't worry, usually most computers nowadays can handle millions of polygons. It could be a little lag, but it works most of the time. And now I'm going to render again. If you wonder how I saved my previous render, you can hit H and then the left panel will pop up. Hit the plus button then you can save the current render. The lighting is still in blocking stage. Now we can go to HDRI Heaven, which is a super powerful website that provides free HDR lightings. Please help to donate them if you are using their resources. And here I'm picking only indoor HDRI. That's pretty simple because we don't want to simulate outdoor lighting. It is going to look funny that way. I'm picking this large corridor and downloading the 4K version. Back into our project files, under source image, we are creating a new folder and name it HDRI as. Then paste our HDRI into the folder. Back into Maya. And create a dome light. Select the dome light and check use dome text. Import our HDRI into the dome text slot. Now we are going to hit render again to see how it looks like. Okay, the environment color was fine, but then the lighting direction is not good at this point. Go into the HDRI settings and select V-Ray Place Environment Text. Rotate our light by tweaking horizontal rotation. Now the lighting comes from the right side and it feels a lot better. Let's increase the brightness intensity to 2. Select the current camera and go to Attribute, Assign V-Ray Physical Camera. 
Now, if we go all the way down, we should be able to find extra V-Ray attribute. Be sure treat as V-Ray physical camera is checked and set F number to 1.8, ISO to 50. Check enable depth of field and specify focus. Now run IPR and right click on the render. We can now select where we want the camera to focus. Now we can expand the compositing panel and adjust something like white balance, hue and saturation, exposure and slomic tone map. One thing to bear in mind here is to always place your Flomic Tone Map at the highest stack. Most of the time we don't want to stack anything else above this layer. Now one last model we want to add into the scene, the mini light bulbs around the blanket. First duplicate the bed sheet, blanket and pillows. Combine them and make them into live object by hitting the magnet icon on top. Now you shouldn't be able to click on it anymore. Select the curve tool and click around, we can now draw on top of the model without having to go to different angles and move around. Now I'm drawing a track for the minibubs wire. I'm going to adjust it a bit more, because clearly we can see some area clip into mesh and we don't want that. Now we are going to rebuild the curve to make sure the vertex points spread evenly and gives us more points and room for editing the curve. Now I'm going to further enhance the curve position. Every time I move them, I will always rebuild the curve. Now I'm creating a cylinder setting the resolution to 6 sides. Delete the faces to leave only one circle face like I did in the video. Now I'm holding C button on my keyboard and middle mouse dragging the face to snap on the curve. Rotate it to face against the line's direction. Then shift click the curve and go to extrude. It is going to look strange but once you key in more divisions in the extrude option, you will see it extrude along the curve. Now I'm adding a transform node so that I can control the thickness of the wire. One note here, I did not delete my history for this process here, so that I can still edit my curve and the mesh is going to be affected. I can still adjust the thickness anytime I want. Okay, I'm happy with the curve now and we can create the bob itself. Start from a simple cylinder and deform them. They should be super simple compared to what we did in the previous video. Now I'm going to place them on the wire. To make it look believable, it is best to have the wire to go through inside the bob. So here we are going to do a simple modification here. Split the wire and extrude both of them into the bob. It is okay if there's a little mesh clipping. We are not going to close up so nobody is going to find out. I'm going to do this very quickly to every bob over a certain distance. Well, I'm pretty sure there's a much faster way to do this, like using scripting, but since this is a one-time task, we can do it manually and keep things simple. I'm rotating the bob to face different directions compared to the last one. We always want to make it look different. Making things to look random helps a lot in realism.
Now let's render again, and this is the outcome of the day. In the next video, we are putting texture and shader on them. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the YouTube channel and stay tuned for new videos. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.